kicking off. A big crowd in Headingley for one of the matches of the season. And a nervous start for Winners, but the ball was not backwards. And Leeds have come out firing on all cylinders here. Well, there's no doubt, David, I've just said one of the matches of the season. Well, of that there's no doubt at all, and perhaps today a lot of questions will be answered on people like uh, Devereaux and uh, Paul Moriarty in particular. Kicked by Tate. Now, Warren Wilson is the fullback in the absence of the injured Gary Spencer, who had nine stitches in a foot injury, sustained at the very last minute of last week's game. Ford. Phil Ford desperately wants to do well and show his paces against Martin Afaya today. First offside of the match, awarded by referee Ray Tennant from Castleford. Gizzard, playing with a scrum cap, he's got that fractured cheekbone. That looks a useful kick. But, uh, it's going to be fielded by the fullback Alan Tate. So Coleman couldn't find a touch. Now oh, Kebby. Well, David Leeds are renowned as a good open footballing side. Witness certainly have won that reputation over the last couple of years, and I think the crowd here have come hoping for a really adventurous game. Well, uh, there shouldn't be any doubts about that because you have people like Ford and Afire, you have Devereaux and Carl Gibson and Gary Schofield, so already the options are tremendous for people to watch out for this afternoon. Well, the tackle that went in there was not to the liking of referee Tennant, the one on Moriarty. Jonathan Davis will take the penalty, put it into touch. Joe Grimmer, he got two tries here in the Cup earlier this year. So he likes Headingley and that's often on the players' minds if they like a ground. They tend to perform better. Smith, that's David Hugh. Davis, Tate joins the line, slips a good one for Carrier as well. He gets it away for Kebby. It's all the way around there, Tate keeps the move going. It's forced back over halfway though by Carl Gibson. Davis will kick. Find a touch. I think he might do. So Ford couldn't quite get there. That was a, a rugby union style kick. Well, that's right. I think it's taken the steam out of it. But uh, witness aren't getting anywhere by moving the ball at the moment because the tackling is so keen. So he's just changed his options, kicked over the top, slowed it all down, and that's a good tactic to start the game off. Well, the word on scrums these days is that nearly always the side that puts the ball in gets it out. Happened there. The role of the hooker is very much a changed one these days. Powell! What an array of talent we've got here. One international to another is Riddell. Very popular figure here at Headingley. Crowd of chanting Huey down below me. Izzard! Barging run from the forward. Now a fire. This is a chance for the wingman to stretch 
Santos. Great work of sitting the legs of his. But he did well to get that ball back and keep it in play. Kenzie, long spinning pass to Davies. Tries to create the gap for Currier, and Currier himself sprints through again. Gibson uh, is back for Hume, and the ball obviously went forward by the time Hume had picked it up. The witness really are eager to throw it around. Well, they have to be, I think, because they're a very good football inside, and as we know, if you move the ball out wide, that was a superb break then by Currier, brought the ball back inside. I think he was a little unfortunate the ball actually went forward when David Hume picked it up. Players on both sides receiving treatment. There's Andy Currier. And further down the field, Carl Gibson is also being treated. So, Carl Gibson hobbled away. Taking rather gingerly steps. Andy Currier, who had that marvellous season over in Australia, and uh, I think they'll be looking to go back there. Back with the action. Another Australian, Craig Coleman, to put this one into the scrum. Up, Currier picks it up. That was a very strange scrum indeed. Again, they keep the ball in play. So it's going to come out on the lead side. Witness snatched it. Now Davis, good ball as well. This is promising for Witness. Devereux stumbled, but uh, shows his strength in keeping going. Now Tate, good ball from his hands to that of a fire. Aaron pins him, and he's lost the ball. Both sides are looking to open it up, but what a strong run here by Vince Fawcett. He's a game lad, is this one. I'm told he's a tremendous sportsman at whatever he turns his hand to. Good cricketer, and he's a good athlete as well. Powell barges his way through the middle, offloads it. Dixon carries it on. Dixon goes for the line. All down by Davis, but these are good moments for Leeds. He's just not uh, going to hand for them. Schofield turns it back. Desperate defending for Witness. And there'll be another six tackles as well because Witness actually managed to get a hand on that. Oh, the fire can't hold it. Gary Schofield might. Gary Schofield tries to put it down. Forced out. But Witness really hanging on for all their might. Well, that was really desperate tackling by the Witness side then. But that's what the result of good backing up there. The man going straight, backing up the man with the ball, causes the defence all kinds of problems. Hey! And uh, when they wanted it, Witness got it. Oh, and, oh, that one spilled, and Gibson couldn't get there. The ball came off the foot, so now it's Kebby's turn to run. Oh, and here's another exciting young man, Brian McKebby, pulled down on the halfway line, and we'll look to see if the penalty is awarded, and he imagines it will be, by a referee tenant. It is indeed, and Kebby says, come on. Was not well, at all well you'll, you'll see exactly what happens here. Witness trying to move out the ball out of all the... Kebby now takes the ball on the outside. Now, he's got the pace to go on, but he knows the cover's going to get him. So he kicks ahead, definitely taken out. And Leeds have taken Carl Gibson off. Carl Gibson going back to the dugout. Jonathan 
Davis with the game's first chance of points. He's kicked plenty this season. And he's kicked another one here at Headingley. So the game's first points belong to witness and to Jonathan Davis. came because of uh, Witness's pace on the flanks and uh, he simply committed the sin. That's right and he was taken out a penalty goal and he took that uh, with plenty of confidence and that'll do him and the team a lot of good. down, Coleman slips it into the middle, and that's gone and the penalty is given against Leeds, for feeding, it's a rare event these days. Well I find that incredible that you should have to feed on your own head and ball, it, it, there's no excuse for that, and as a result of it, he's got a penalty and that's all that's done is taken the pressure off witness. a slow entry but he is the type of guy that can do things he's a big guy just like Andy Curry it is and uh, if he can force his way down the middle and still distribute the ball that's what they'll be looking for him to do today Moriarty another of the Welsh contingent a Welsh feeling about this this side today oh lovely move by Carrier he really fooled everybody there and gets to where for Devereux and now a fire cuts inside delivers the pass and it wasn't picked up Mackenzie couldn't hold it it hasn't quite, quite worked out yet for Martin a fire today Side of Fawcett, and he bundles him over that white line. Certainly a favourite ground for witness. Now the penalty has gone to Leeds, when witness were not far from their line. Did. They took the ball straight on, he went down, but look at that, there was no doubts about that at all. That was a show, that was a sending off, but there's no doubt about that. And that's not ten minutes either, that is off for the match. So witness their own worst enemies in that sense, because they're now down to 12 men with a long time in the game to go. And, uh, Huey Waddell must have felt that one, my goodness. Like running into a rock. 
Well, it absolutely floored him, and uh, there's no excuse for that. I've no doubts that Moriarty got hurt early on in the tackle, and uh, there's no way you can take revenge of that sort. Devote. Well, I think that's going to increase the temperature. Well, that's a knock on. And now the touch judge is on as well. It's getting rather heated. I think this is important now, the referee and the touch judges. What they have to do is now get that authority over to the players because it could boil up into something that will be sort of not what people would like in the game. He's really got to put his foot down, he's got to tell people exactly what he wants. Here we go again, just watch this. Although the ball went then, the players are still committed to each other, they're still pushing each other about. Well, it was Dixon who got the talking to, and it's Windus who got the penalty. a day for faint hearts not a day to shirk anything either short ball for a nail Paul Hugh who did a Manful job for Great Britain as a hooker, and he's back in his more accustomed role of loose forward. Oh, the timing of the run by McKenzie. Grimmer comes inside, keeps going as well, slips it for Tate. Well, Witness were bitterly disappointed with their performance last week against Lee, and they're keen to put that behind them, as you can see. Davis hoists a massive kick. Well taken by Warren Wilson. He was playing for Hunslet this time last year. Phil Ford. Well, what can he produce? Well, there could be a gap over that side, and Fawcett takes on Kebby. Fawcett knocks off Kebby. That knock off Smith as well. Devorty. Coleman's kick. There's Great Britain's fullback. A lovely shot of Alan Tate that was, and the intense concentration required. Because it's like a cup ties, this. Well, it is really. I mean, when you get two sides of this quality and class, then you can't have anything but tension. Quiet of the referee. Whose is it? You said it's a scrum. Oh, out for Leeds. Now this is danger for them. Devotee goes through the gap himself. Oh, Devotee was only a stride away from making a critical break. Coleman, Dixon. And a pile driver of a tackle from Grimmer. The crowd then thought he used his knee. Izzard, and Izzard runs strongly for that line, and the first try of the game belongs to Leeds and to their substitute, Gary Lord. And they'll even aggro behind the line, but Lord, who's been on only a few moments, has a try, and Leeds have the lead. Well, there's no doubt at all about this. This the try is scored because of people looking for the man off the ball, not on the ball. Look at that. Didn't even go for the man, got out of it completely, passed it inside, Lord takes it on the burst, crash is over. Well, he scored last week at if, Salford. If you watch this try, this is all because they take the man without the ball, and because they've gone for the man without the ball, it's really made it easy. Just Gap draws the man, and it opens up a gap.
Colin Muskell's boot has been extremely reliable in recent weeks. Seven out of seven last week. And midway through the first half, he has the opportunity to give Leeds a 6-2 lead. As he prepares to kick, witness have their discussion what went wrong. And Maskell surprises everyone by missing. 4-2, it really should have been six. strong on the outside burst, they feed him the ball on the run and he takes an awful lot of stopping. Of course, to be remembered that Leeds today are without their other Australian forward, Mark Laurie. And there's a kick from Coleman, that's spinning, scudding towards the touch, and what a lovely kick from Craig Coleman, he really does make this side tick. Well, I've said time and time again, you have to have a half-back that can look up, watch exactly what's happening with play. He saw that he was under pressure, he just stood back from it, a long kick into touch. come out for Leeds. Oh, and then he knocked on. Well, it was a bad moment for that to happen. They might just have caught witness in some more disarray there. However, it wasn't to be. Leeds have it. And uh, they're really in full flow. They're roaring towards the witness line now with Carl Gibson. And everybody seems to want the ball. And, oh, so close. Warren Wilson... Plenty of options here. Heron, Devote. Oh, and Phil Ford put it down when he looked as though he had to be a certain scorer. Well, it's something you don't associate with an international winger. He took his eye off the ball and they moved it out wide. Definitely a certain chance of scoring in that corner. Witness really need to settle down, don't they? Good Lord, I think must be thinking what on earth is going on out there. We're losing our discipline a little bit. Well, it's very difficult. Both sides are obviously fired up before the start of the game, and uh, there's so much at stake, obviously, to win. Both sides looking for a good victory this afternoon. And, of course, Moriarty gets involved in that fracker and witness down to 12 men. they now really got to steady it all up, sort themselves out, and conserve as much energy as they possibly can. That was good to see. Jonathan Davies sharing a laugh and a joke with the referee. So he, at least, is still in good humour. Grimmer. Ball goes back, so O'Neill takes it from McKenzie. He gets it away as well. Now Deverin. Deverin shows that strength that David was talking about earlier. Now the ball's gone away from him as well. Must be murderous for the referee. It's going one way, then the other. Schofield. Errors in play statistic is going to be quite interesting. Both sides have put the ball down in good positions. Askill Coleman and now Devorty. Oh, Devorty makes the break. He's only got one man in front of him. And the pass is good. Is he there? No, he's a little short, but he's over this time. It's his hard. He tumbled over the line. Good support play as well. Lovely break from Gary Devorty. Hazard knew exactly where he was going and followed him all the way. 
sniffed out that try, and although he was hauled down literally a yard short, he had the foul to get over. Just watch this, this is a pre-planned move before all this start. It allowed him now to sneak into space. Sees that he's covered by Tate, but has a good loose forward shot, passes into side to his head, who's always run on the burst, and goes over. This was a set plan move, and this is perfect because it opened up a huge gap here with people not quite knowing what to do. But Devotee knew exactly what he was doing, and he is running into space, draws Tate, back inside, man in support, and score. Maskell has missed one kick from a very much simpler position. He's not missed this one though. Curled in at just the right moment. So his name's on the scoreboard and leads her in double figures. And this great grizzly bear of a man has made a colossal difference to Leeds since he came here from Parramatta. Well, he certainly has. He's a tigerish runner, and it's nice when you make a half a break. When you have such a good footballer like both Heron at standoff half and Devotee at loose forward, when you have somebody who can run hard onto the ball, and this guy certainly has made himself known here at, uh, at Head and Lee. got to be said the world club champions are in trouble again we saw them at Sheffield uh, when they obviously didn't play anything like to their potential and today they're in trouble once more well yes it must be worrying really for Jagger as I said he hasn't had the best of starts in this game having the player sent off but now we have an unfortunate incident where number 11 has just collapsed on the floor yeah Roy Powell went down really oh 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 dear he doesn't know where he is We had an unnerving incident last week involving Ronnie Gibbs of Castleford, who was wandering around at one stage, obviously in a daze. And this is the other side, of course, of rugby league. It's such a fast and physical game these days. One does fear for the safety of the players. That's right, and I have no doubts at all. If I was on the bench, and I think coaches have to realise that as well. If a player has a bump of that nature that Ronnie had last week, you should take him off and see how he is on the side of the field, not allow him to come up. And the same with Roy Power now. The player must leave the field to play. Well, they reacted quickly there. The players summoned referee Ray Tennant immediately as soon as they could catch his eye and he stopped play. And the stretcher has been brought for the Great Britain second row man. He was one of the most popular players of all here at Headingley. He clearly is not in any fit condition to continue. And genuine looks of concern. Certainly no incident leading up to that, but uh, it does appear conscious, obviously, at the moment. He's just waved as well to suggest he's going to be OK. It's good to know. Well, that's nice, yes, he is a popular guy, as you've said, John, and I mean, his tackling is well appreciated here at Head Lee. Second sub coming to confront Tate. I'm trying to wrest that ball away from O'Neill's grasp. Here comes Grimmer. It's lost there. This first half is certainly not going to 
this is work. Lord. Eight points in arrears, ten minutes of the half left. Seems to have had a new lease of life playing at standoff half. He's always been a very fine loose forward, but he's done a very good job for David Ward. Oh, the kick there, straight into Kerrier's hands. That's a better one from uh, Davis. Never hurt. Passing's a little bit. Well, it's not uh, characteristic of witness, that's for sure. The fire is following this move across, but that ball might go to hand. No, it might now. And Carrier with Kebby. Carrier clung on. And they look to Grimmer to get them inside the lead half, and he just does that. It's on the last tackle now. Clever. Oh, very clever indeed. What good play by McKenzie, who tries to kick on. Now Fawcett. What a good runner this lad is. He is a big, strong fellow, Vince Fawcett. And he certainly looks the part out on that left wing. Lord. Back inside. Good play. Dixon. Maskell now, and Maskell is all down by Davis. Another player is flat out, but it's all leads for the moment. Again, they swing it left, Wilson. It's Paul Dixon who is out of the game for the moment, just receiving treatment. Now Heron, Heron's found the way to the try line a lot recently. Coleman and Devorty, once more Devorty goes for that line. Devotee came back, and oh, we can't pick it up now. What a good footballer Gary Devotee is, though. Oh, he is a good footballer. He thinks about everything he does. He opens up gaps in seemingly impossible positions, and he's always looking to offload the ball to a man in a better place. Rimmer, that's a better one, though. And Alan Tate was up in the line. A fire's alongside him on the left. Can a fire keep it? But you'll get it now, and the fire keeps going. If he gets this one away, that must have been forward. That's the best we've seen from Witness, really, in that Alan Tate joined the line perfectly. The fire couldn't hold his pass, though, but he was in a very difficult position. Yes, he was. He was under a lot of pressure. But see, they have to move it out quickly, Witness, and they're not ever giving up, not giving up of the opportunity of moving the ball out quickly. And Tate is always on the alert, picks the ball up perfectly here. Now, luckily, he watches now. He asks Martin to come back. He tries to throw a pass. Unfortunately, knocked down. Fire picks it back up, but has difficulty in holding off forward. Leads his ball, and now Delaney, just caught by Tate. The Lord has been a sprightly lad since he came on, and he's there again in the tussling with Carrier. Heron. Just the two tries in the match, but there's been some really good open running and good rugby. The crowd are ooing at just about every tackle today. But I'm sure the players knew what they were in for. And the ball was uh, not forward, Leeds can continue. Came off a witness hand, so they were able to play on. Leeds put in as well, so they have another chance here just on that 25. Out it comes, Delaney now Gibson pulled back by Paul Hume. 
if Leeds could get a third try here before half time. Oh, they've lost it. Witness taking the ball. And uh, it was a bad time for Leeds to lose it, really. Another try then really could have killed Witness off. It certainly could have, and uh, it's incredible the number of passes that have been put down, such as the pace of the game, I think. People are trying to offload the ball in the impossible position. Just as that happened, just again, again another lost opportunity. And we lead his ball. So, 18 errors already. Not the sort of thing you would expect from these two. It's because it's such a frenetic match, and there's another one. Dixon looked a little perplexed. Strange, he's found his best try scoring vein since he moved up into the front row. That's Witness's ball. Now Davis. They really need a little bit of magic from him, maybe. A fire. He's got a lot of room in which to work. Gives the pass now. And down this touchline goes Devereux. Back through the hands. Fire and Tate. Tackled by Delaney. The referee is going to give a booking to Paul Delaney. In fact, he's going to have 10 minutes, says Delaney. Well, it's frantic stuff. Darrow comes inside again. Look at that up around his neck. But the ball is then flipped across the middle, just about to be dropped. Alan Tate picks it up and straight across a top head tag. And again, the referee was on the spot. He knew what to do and he sent the fellow off. For 10 minutes. So with Paul Delaney in the sin bin, Witness have their chance before half-time. And it would change the complexion of the game so much if they could get on the try sheet. Mackenzie, Hume, bit of a looping pass, but David Smith takes it on. Four tackles to go. Mackenzie, he's got Paul Hume there, now there might be a gap. Davis, out, and a fire's over! Martin of fire, where did he come from? Wriggles over that line, the left winger bobbing up in the right centre position. And Fire's 22nd of the season could not have been better timed from a witness point of view. What an amazing record this man has. Davis now wriggles about, but he's a sensible enough guy. Mackenzie, first of all, with a pass to Jonathan Davis. Now he stands, says up. Brings inside Carl Gibson, but a fire, as he's done in the test match, was on hand again to get over it for the try. Yeah, he's happy about that. Well, he's being booed over here by the Leeds fans, but I think that's only because he's shown his try scoring aptitude yet again. Treatment, by the way, is still being administered to Alan Tate. We've got a right clout on the head. Well, Davis has kicked one from a not dissimilar position. Can he do it again? Yes, he can. He's got his boots on today. And uh, that sets us up for a grandstand second half. It certainly does. Uh, that's a, a great kick, and that's when goal kicks really do matter because slowly but surely they creep in their way back into the game, and Leeds have got to be careful. What I can't understand, though, really, is if one gets sent off for a head tackle, why doesn't the other one get sent off, not only having ten minutes for a head tackle? It seems rather strange. I've been impressed by my first sighting in Rugby League of John Devereux. He's run to very good purpose and he's very elusive. Only a minute of the half left. And I would imagine both sets of players will be quite relieved about that. It's been fast and furious. Davis is still going and he's still looking to... Uh, well, it was Mackenzie who was trying to get that ball away. Well, Davis was going to come up in support. It's 
no good arguing there. He definitely dropped it forward. The referee was quite right in that decision. Leads his ball. Heron. Skill field for Coleman. And in the gap goes Heron. Really good football. Back inside again. Gibson. Gibson and Wilson are both there. With that line. Schofield, Coleman, Heron. This is Carl Gibson once more. Well, David Heron, he really is posing a lot of problems for Witness. Close to the line, it keeps popping up in these gaps. And it's Leeds finishing the half looking for a try with Lord, who got the first one. For witness to hold out to the hooter. Can they do that? Coleman and Schofield once more. And Schofield squeezes the ball away. Phil Ford. He spurned one chance close to the line. And nail him this time. So it's a roaring finish to the half, and Coleman's kick through is fielded. Well done by Alan Tate, who must. It's David Hume. David Hume. Totally unnecessary. John Devereux's hurt. Good being to leave is over there. And, uh, another of the uh, charges. Really sad to see the police on the field. David tending to him, along with the witness bench. Well, it's been a rough, tough first half as this. It certainly is a tough first half, and uh, a lot of it is unnecessary stuff. I can understand the tension between the two sides, uh, but the referee has been a little inconsistent today as well, and that doesn't help the circumstances. Well, Paul Hughes' legs are like jelly at the moment. It's going to be another yellow card. I think for Craig Gizzard. And for Jill Grimmer. So we've had one sending off, three sin bins. Not really the sort of uh, count we were expecting today. We were no. expecting a try count. That's right. We were all looking forward to this game because it had so many possibilities. There were so many great players in the side, but for some of the wrong reasons, some of the drama has now happened. We nearly forgot the ball. It's been a long half. O'Neill. Really, I think it would do everybody a favour if the hooter sounded now. That's a good kick from Hume. Wilson's got a scurry over there, and it might still find touch. Excellent kick. Well, one only hopes that when they go off to the dressing rooms, they'll have a cooling down period and come out and play the football they're capable of. That's why right, both sides are capable of it. I think the both coaches would rather see that type of football as well. Aggression is all right as long as it's controlled, but some of it has been totally unnecessary this afternoon. And somehow, that ball came out for Leeds. And here's Gibson. I think we've all lost track of, track of time. Penalties awarded against Jonathan Davis.
effect the way we wanted it. There have been some good tries, there has been some good football, there's also been some unseemly and savoury rugby league as well. well this is a man's game, there's not much doubt about that. And half-time here then at Headingley, those two tries for Leeds from Gary Lord and from Craig Izzard against one by Martin Afire for Witness give Leeds a 10-8 interval lead. We'll be back with the second half after the break. Yes, he is. Robert, Joe Wareham was saying to me uh, when, I, when he took me upstairs that they were hoping to get rid of him. Yeah. Bar taking should go down. Has <laughs> he agreed to the interview? I should say. Not when a Moriarty's was bad, London. As you said, they've got to be consistent. But but that's right. I mean, if, if he gets sent off for one head tackle, yeah, then he's got to go for the left, on the other head tackle sure. because the two things had the same effect. Yeah. Right. Just that one was a little worse than the other, but I mean, there's one no was difference. A bit more head tackles. Yeah. I mean, every tackle you feel it, don't you? He's lost it at the moment, the refers. He, oh, he it's good for him to have half time, though.
One, two, three, four, five. Yes, there it is. Does, does Nicky, you hearing me? Do you want me to throw to you with anything in particular? Right, good. <laughs> That's a good line, that, you're right. Welcome back to Headingley for the resumption here between Leeds and Widnes. Leeds in the lead just by 10 points to 8. Well, somebody I'm sure would love to have been involved in the action out there today, the Great Britain and Leeds prop forward Lee Crooks. He's down there with Nick. Can you get it? Three more. There was some fairly rough stuff out there. Um, there was a little bit, yeah. I think obviously it's a top of the table clash, and um, you know the, the feelings in both sides are, are very high at the moment. It's a competitive game, and uh, the lads want to win. So you know it's going to be a bit rough and tumble, but obviously as long as people keep their heads, you know it'll be a good game in the second half. The wind is coming back a little bit. Um, I've the last sort of five or ten minutes, uh, they started to pick the game up again. I think that obviously Leeds have got to slow the witness play the ball down. Um, they witness are best when they're playing quick play the balls and attacking very quickly and if we can slow them down a little bit I think we'll get on top of them. And briefly what's your own future now? Uh, well hopefully um, I'm playing in the A team on Tuesday I think things will more or less be sorted out by Monday so uh, with a bit of luck I might come into the reckoning for a first team place next Sunday. Lee, thanks very much let's see how today's 13 are getting on in the second half with John Hell. That's good to hear everybody I'm sure wants to see Lee Crooks back in first team action Let's have a look at the first half statistics and the scrums took a real walloping did witness there. Leeds taking them 10-2. They took two against the head. Colin Maskell did. Leeds conceded three more penalties than witness in that half there. And the errors in play really uncharacteristic for witness to make as many as 12. The dirty dozen, I suppose they would say. Scrum it is, and this is early encouragement for Leeds at the start of the second half. They're put in, it's come out for them for Coleman. Heron now, he'll try and slice away through. Not the easiest thing to do with the two of these strapping chaps hanging onto either side of you. Coleman scurries away. Dixon, good little flip back. And they're keeping it spinning through the hands. Here's Devorte. Devorte's had a great game. And Devorte thunders towards that witness line. Inspirational start for Leeds in the second half. Paul Dixon, and Dixon might make it. He's got Heron in. Dixon couldn't, Heron could. And David Heron, well, the tries are rolling in now for the loose forward converted to standoff half. He might be in the twilight of his career, but he's got a new lease of life. Well, they say do the thing simply, and this is exactly what's happened here. Whilst he's passed, he's just done the loop round. Perfect drawing and timing of a pass and the man. What a start Leeds have made to this second half. David Heron, he's got a good try scoring record against Witness over the years. He was scoring against them as long ago as 1980.
worth remembering, of course, that at the moment both sides are down to 12 uh, men. Well, witness to 11, in fact. Witness to 11 men with Moriarty off Grimmer in the sin bin. And leads to 12. And that might be why that gap appeared. You can't play rugby league with 11 men. Maskell has this chance to make it 16-8. And he's taken that chance. Leads edge further away. Leeds needed a good start to the second half. Witness down to 11 men, and that's just what they've got. So they really have capitalised just when they had the opportunity. That's a knock on, though. that one and the referee runs on the lead side so what it seems witness have the ball and they have never hurt a first look on scrum down at the former bridge end player Mackenzie farms it out and Paul Hume does the right thing in throwing it back and O'Neill oh a bad ball from him really Is Mackenzie. He's never far away. The ball is close to the opposition line. He's put on to ground though. Good time for Leeds to have it back. Cutting inside. They're moving the ball around beautifully at times today, Leeds. There's Delaney. Lord. Schofield settles things down with this kick. Good take though by David Marsh, who's come into the fullback berth in the second half in place of Alan Tate. Tate was obviously somewhat groggy. That crack on the head he took. Neil. Hume. But Leeds' fortune certainly have been revived since David Ward took over. And in recent weeks, they've strung together some excellent results. Spirited running from Warren Wilson. And he plays the ball to himself, there's nothing to stop you doing that. He's given a piggyback. Well, Roy Powell sitting at the front there, alongside David Ward in the front of your picture, but Roy Powell certainly looked as though he's uh, OK again. Well, that's very gratifying because he is such a staunch favourite here at Headingley and uh, it would have been sad uh, had he not recovered from that injury. What a lovely ball from Coleman, it's opened them up for and Ford can't hold on. Wonderful football, there's a lovely ball slipped by Coleman to Devorty. Of course, the two played together at Hull last season. They really have worked an excellent understanding. Well, Gary Devorty is such a good footballer. He sizes up the opposition, he passes, he runs into tackles, he does an awful lot of with the ball. Witness are in trouble. Herod, to try Schofield, bounds over. And that's the old Gary Schofield. Coming up on the shoulder, timing the run to perfection. And he rolled over the line. Schofield has a great record against Witness over the years. And Witness are in real trouble again now. They lost the ball. And from that moment on, they were backpedalling and always in trouble. Well, it... Well, it's important that uh, Leeds now, there's more bounce to their play as well. They're moving the ball out quickly. And there they are, Schofield back on song. And that's what all Leeds are looking for. What a try. A 
Leeds very much on song. And Maskell keeps them chirping. 22-8. And the times are getting tougher for witness. It's time for Joe Grimmer and Craig Izzard to come back. And how witness have missed Grimmer. They've been down to 11 men for the first few minutes of this second half. And they've just not been able to cope. Well, we all know what the standards are in rugby league. They fit the fast and furious people. And when you're only down to 11 men, it's a very, very difficult to even get a game together. Ford, he could have had a couple of tries today. Here's his yard back in the thick of things, and you get the feeling he loves it. Lord. And again, a great roar from the crowd. I felt that tackle was a little bit too high, but the referee didn't. Still, Maskell's made the break up the middle, and he's got support on his left. Here's Wilson. Kick ahead. Wilson and Schofield go for it. Well played by Jonathan Davis, who runs... Tries to get away from trouble. Schofield nailed him near his own line and he's penalised. Actually, if Wilson had uh, managed to give that ball out to Schofield, there'd have been no stopping him. Well, I couldn't understand why he didn't do that because he made the break up in the middle of the field. Schofield was with him as well. Watch now, Maskell makes the break of the field. He leaves a kneel for dead. He sprints up the middle of the field. The whole defence now is coming up with him. Passes outside to Wilson. Now, listen, he kicks over the top when Gary Schofield's with him. Schofield loves passes like that. Although a fire was there at his neck, it would have been touch and go whether a try would have been scored. Well, the Leeds crowd are loving this one, especially with their team in front. Witness have been really run ragged in the opening minutes of the second half. And yet they're such a good side themselves. For one of the few teams who could get back from this sort of situation, here's Devereux. Ten minutes of this second half, and it's never stopped. He's Fawcett confronting Kevy. Brave tackle by the wingman. It's not the biggest of wingers. Heron. And Dixon carries the fight to witness. Well, and what sleight of hand this time is for Wilson. And once more it's Devorty looking for that eye of the needle. Six tackle, so there'll probably be a kick here from Coleman. Here it is. Oh, it's a tricky one as well. Who's going to get there first? Witness just managed to get the ball away as well, but it's going to be tap on the 25. This is where they have a chance to run quickly. It never ends this game. It never stops, it's breathless. It certainly doesn't. Uh, when you have two sides as capable as this, once they start throwing the ball around now and backing up the man with the ball, it, it seems to go at 100 miles an hour. Schofield was on it, the fire tried to kick ahead, and it left a comeback. Yeah, so uh, Paul Dixon and Martin Afire, who were colleagues for Great Britain last year. Had a few words, I think, then. Schofield. Wilson gets it away once more for Delaney this time. On the wing here, Fawcett has to come inside. Now Coleman again with that little kick over. 
Marsh is the fullback now, having taken over from Tate. Heron tackling. Neil flings it back and a fire. He's got a feel of doing something rather sensational. Gives it, shows it, gives it out to Kevin. Was, he actually signed for Widnes last season, didn't get many opportunities last year and was injured for some time, but he's come back this season all right. Made his mark. He's out for Leeds again. This is where Widnes sometimes get caught. Gibson. I've been caught through the middle uncommonly today. I'm surprised really because what is happening is they're not moving up on the halfbacks at all and uh, Heron is having time really to distribute the ball out wide. Good running again by Warren Wilson now. They just got his hand to it, Marsh did. He's had a good game as the fullback. Coleman almost sold an outrageous dummy. Delaney loses it. Back with witness. These players are going to know they've been in the game today, all right. Still 22 points to eight, the Leeds lead. Kick straight down the middle is to Wilson. Oh, that's clever. Flick it up, take it on. Coleman, who was actually on Witness's books two years ago, and Dougie Lawton sent him home. Well, it is difficult when you also have David Hume there as well at the same time, but as you like you said, so at the head of the programme, the two of them play together at all, both uh, uh, Coleman and uh, Gary Devotee, and they most certainly know each other's play well. Now Witness are trying to string it along the back line, and the fire is out on that touchline, waiting for it. Just did a common lead, have the ball back again. Witness, I don't think I've ever seen them put so many passes down. They've really been their own worst enemies. Here's Phil Ford dancing this way and that. He couldn't find a partner. Leeds certainly look capable of adding more tries, especially when Devort is in control like this. Have another three tackles yet. They're spreading it left, Heron cuts inside and David Heron, he's got a taste for tries! He's wriggled over once again, David Heron, two in a match for him. Leeds had a standoff half here for many, many years, John Holmes, who was a real favourite of the crowd, and since David Heron has moved up from number 13 to the number 6 jersey, he's rediscovered the art of try scoring. Well, they must be wondering where all uh, the Leeds players are coming from because there's one after another. He sells a dummy, he pushes off Grimmer, he pulls through the middle, Carrier holds off him, inexcusable that, and Heron scores. 
They've got to get another point. They now have to throw the ball about as often as they possibly can. Heron seizes on this opportunity, throws out the dummy, pushes people off late in the centre. What a player. Maskell takes a couple of steps to the left, comes round, and not quite this time. Straight into the crowd, but not between the sticks. It's still a very healthy lead that the home side have, though. Well, it's a testing time for a young substitute to come on, a 19-year-old Jason Critchley takes the place of David Smith, he only made his debut last week against Lee, his team lost on that day and they look like getting beaten again. Hello. Everybody wants it now, here's Ford. been playing well enough to beat Witness, but I think many people will be surprised by the margin at the moment. Now Devorty puts boot to ball for a fire. Is there anything left for him on Witness? Still goes, does well to make the room for the pass to march. Get the fires in uh, possession. No way through there. Gibson. Quickly, and the nail. Oh, an interception! Well, it would have been a real typical Gary Schofield effort, that wouldn't it? Curses, he says. He has like a praying mantis. He just waits for it to come. Unfortunately, that wasn't one that stuck, but he's always there or thereabouts. You can't afford to throw loose passes with him around. Certainly likes playing his witness. Now a fire sets off through the middle. Oh, that was good quick thinking by the wingman. Aaron and Lord nailed him. Halfway through the half. Marsh, Critchley. Critchley shows a good turn of speed. Still going as well, Critchley. It's finally Lord who puts him down. David Hume. Davies. Again, they're trying to work it out to as far as a fire. But one number six on the other. David, when you were mentioning a few minutes ago about the game being played at 100 miles an hour, someone like David Heron there, who has been playing this game for a long, long time, it's a tribute to him but he can still keep up with it. Well, he does, because he uses his head, he knows how to distribute the ball, he's played it loose forward, and uh, he has that little more time, that makes a great player sometimes, to know the time that you have and then to put things into operation, and he certainly has made this Leeds team tick this afternoon. there for Coleman but to kick Marsh feels this one straight up on him Ford and Devorty well witness earlier in the season when we saw them we were beaten at Sheffield five tries to one on that occasion and Leeds have got five tries to witnesses one today so far Grimmer keeps going, 
Can't offload to McKenzie though. The two Humes together again, and Paul Hume tries to make a gap through the middle. Hyde O'Neill, it was a forward pass though. Not by much, but by enough. And again, we have to have the physiotherapist on for Paul Hume. Well, the trainers have never been off in this game. He really has had an inspirational game, and credit to uh, David Ward for the switch, moving him from loose forward to standoff half. I suppose all players have a team they like to play against. Obviously, witness is David Herring's favourite. enjoyed that moment and here's Heron once more he's really been in the thick of things <laughs> if that one had connected he'd have thought it was Monday already the line, Critchley tries to break it it's an excellent kick from Hume, spinning all the way into touch, just the right length good distance on the kick too from reflection David I think Paul Moriarty has learnt another lesson today in rugby league, you cannot afford to get sent off, especially in the first few minutes of a match. Well, you can't, certainly not in the top match of the day, as this one certainly is, and uh, he'll rue this himself, so will the witness team, and no doubt Dougie Lawton will have much to say to him about it. But uh, they haven't played particularly well, witness, they've lost a lot of balls, and of course Leeds have really been on song, some of their movements have been class to watch. The chance is here, Schofield goes, confronted by Kevy. Gibson tries to turn Currier inside out, Schofield takes it on, still Schofield. 25 yards out, lovely flowing move from Leeds. Still almost quarter of an hour to go. As Leeds come looking for that gap and Heron once more wheels it back inside, Wilson. Devoti. This is the last time. Maskell Coleman goes for the drop goal, and rather inauspiciously. Exactly why it was for a kick. Paul Dixon doesn't seem too concerned.
Here's Phil Ford, having a tilt. Never quite know which way Phil Ford's going to go. More sleight of hand, still it's Heron. Gibson puts it down. Heron's had a very good second half. Well, he has, and uh, I, I don't think we, anyone's given him credit for the amount of tackling he did in the first half as well. Joe Grimmer is, is a very aggressive type prop, and when he was coming, running to the smallest fella, normally in the side as outside half, it was David Heron, and David was bringing him down time and time again. And of course, the second half, he's dictated most of what Leeds have done. Jonathan Davis just couldn't quite work his way past Delaney. Now David Hugh delayed the pass. Perhaps delayed just a little too long. Now a fight. Now a kneel. Marsh. Good ball out for Kebby. Cuts inside Fawcett. Two more come across to take him. Dixon and Gibson. Flinging the longer passes now, but they haven't got a fire over on that side at the moment. He's going to have to try and get across there. So Devereux has got to do it all by himself. Why is it acting half? Well, it's hard to see where Witness are going to score three tries from now, which is what they need to do, and they need to convert them all to get back into this. Well for Wilson. It's run well. It's not the first time today. It's hard. Wilson's hurt himself. Foot injury, I think. Dixon with that peculiar little running style of his manages to get it away for Schofield and Maskell, but it's gone. It's it had to come all the way back. There was a forward pass in there. It was spotted by the referee. But their support play and backing up has been of the highest order. Well, it's been far superior. Witness have put too many more balls down the floor. They look for the man sometimes instead of the ball itself. And they have really lacked the fluent style we normally come to accept from them. Wilson soon shrug off his injury to perpetrate that tackle. And there's another one of those passes going to ground that you were talking about. It really has not been our day. I'm sure that's just what he's thinking. Not my words, Joe Grimmer's words. Leeds ball. Still Delaney. Dixon goes for that gap. It's hard. He just bowl them over. And Herons in the possession. Little flip ball back. Oh, and Gibson gets out of Kebby's tackle. Keeps going as well. And Kebby eventually gets back there with Marsh and with Carrier. Last tackle, so you can expect Devoti to kick, which is exactly what he does. The referee said there was nothing wrong with the tackle. So it's a witness ball. It's not been one of the better days for them, and you can tell by the expressions on the face.
nice little dummy by Mackenzie. He'll keep going, and he kicks forward. Applause all around for Izzard. He's really become a very popular chap as Craig Izzard here. Fawcett. Oh, excellent running from Vince Fawcett. But he might just make it all the way. He's inside Kebby. Uh, Kebby got well back. He got past Mark, but he couldn't get past Kebby. Spreating run from Fawcett. And eventually they get him up. Maskill, Devorty, Schofield. Surely no way through there. And a good strong run from Fawcett. You can tell he meant to get a try then. Coleman shows it, gives it back, they've just kept going with Delaney, Delaney manages, oh, I thought that Lord might have got in, last tackle again, so are they going to throw it or are they going to kick it, or is Gary Schofield going to add a drop goal to his collection? No. Not quite. Well, there's certainly a bite and a punch about the way in which Leeds are playing now, their confidence really uh, at boiling point. I think they've shown that uh, they are serious contenders for the championship now with this performance. So they really have taken witness apart at times, albeit they were down to 11 men when they got a couple of their tries. Now Critchley does find a gap, he's got a fire alongside him. The fire, this go all the way, they will not stop Martin a fire. There is nothing to beat raw speed. Excellent try from a fire, who throws the ball at Carl Gibson. Not a lot of need for any of that. He'd got the try, that was all that mattered. And you really should stay away from things like that. His speed is awesome. Well, this is what Witness have been waiting for. They've been looking for the gap to open up in midfield to let loose Smart in the fire. It doesn't really happen. Critchley has come on the second half. He does just that. He gives him the opportunity. He rounds with ease the fullback. Now, watch when he goes over here. Carl Gibson definitely, although he does show off a little, he does really step on top of him there. And the fire got up rather nasty, to say the least. Just, just stand out, just look at the way the gap is opened up. It's Critchley's running it is here. It gets around. David Heron misses the tackle. A fire as always now, following and backing up the man with the ball. But look carefully, just as he's about to cross for the try, he dives with the ball. Dixon comes in now. Twenty-six points to twelve. Winners still have a lot to do in this match, but it was just a warning, perhaps, to them about the fire's pace and his ability to be in the right place at the right time. Well, we know he can do it, and uh, this is what Witness have been aiming for all the game. They've really let their game go to pieces. Of course, being down to twelve, then eleven men hasn't helped their cause at all. But Leeds, on the other hand, have done the right things at the right time. They've backed up, they've sensibly moved the ball about and David Heron has been a pillar of strength. Brian McKebby trying to get away from his own line, hauled down by Lord. beneath me singing there's only one David Ward so the, the man who was a very popular player throughout his career here at Headingley has stamped his mark certainly as the club's coach Wilson Carrier hustles him towards the touchline he's just managed to keep his feet in play though so Carl Gibson Reception committee waiting for him. Aaron. Now Coleman inside Fawcett. 
willing customer. Taken on by Dixon. Dixon spins out a grimace challenge. He'd really love to get a try with Paul Dixon. He's scored in eight of his last nine matches against Witness. And they keep showing the ball, and Devorty goes through, and he's brought down. And that might be a penalty. It is. The elbow on Devorty. It's again a case of Witness didn't know any other way to stop him, though. Well, that's right, but Gary, as he looked at that one, I think he overreacted the first time. The referee sensed that when he did it early on in the game. But there was no doubts about that time at all. He saw the way through on the left-hand side, put the little grubber through, and, of course, he was balked off the ball. Well, there's only two minutes to go, and Leeds are looking to try and make it 30 points here with Dixon. I would have loved this one. Everything's been full-blooded, to say the least. Well, that's what you expect in rugby league, and Lord, who started it all with the first try, wants to finish it as well. Four more tackles here for Lees to try and get the four points that would take them to 30. Coleman shows it, brings his hard on. About four of them to stop him. been a lot of inventiveness between Coleman, Devorty, Izzard and Heron. Here's Coleman once more and Heron. The long one out. Wilson has Ford outside him. Oh, and then puts it down and then a fire spills it as well. had a big pull in the scrums in the first half, 10-2. They'll be looking for the ball out of this one as well. Now it's a witness putting. 17-7, it's the highest scrum count I ever remember on the programme. And here goes a fire once more, and a fire, he could go the length of the field! He's got an awful lot to do still, Bill Ford's coming over, Bill Ford does pull him down! Memories of last year for the crowd here. Well, Ford last season pulled off the try saving tackle of the season. He's well, just again. watch us. We're always waiting for the fire to have these runs. The crowd rise to the feet when he has the ball. Now he senses another opportunity, and you have to reward him for that because he comes in off the wing now looking for play. He leaves the defence floating. Gibson can do nothing about it. Everybody else seems to have given up the cause, but not Phil Ford. Look at this. Ford hasn't had the happiest day on attack. He's spurned a couple of chances to try scores, but he served his side well on that occasion. And Leeds are still in the possession with Devorty. Colossal punt. Good take by Marsh. To Kebby. Now his turn to kick forward. Bravely done. And Coleman just couldn't quite elude Brimer Kebby. Here's Heron once more, making in Rhodes. It's a Leeds win. 26 points to 12. And the quality of the football shows him the smile of the face of David Ward over there. He'll be delighted. He goes to shake hands with a disappointed Buggy Lawton, I'm sure. But there is no questioning the merit of this Leeds victory. And uh, a pat on the back from Lee Crooks as well. Story. Well, an enjoyable match with Leeds scoring five tries to witnesses two.
So Leeds got five tries on the day to witnesses two and were very good value for their victory. Smiles on all the faces of the Leeds players. A memorable day for them, not so memorable for witness. They've been beaten by 26 points to 12. Lord Izzard, two for David Heron, one for Gary Scott.